Okay, so we're going to be uh, replacing a lever cylinder right here uh, with a ASA high security cylinder. Uh, so ASA has made it very nice and convenient to be able to interchange their cylinders uh, with most of the common brands out there. Uh, this right here is, uh, it's it's not a Schlage, but it's an SC1 keyway, so it's a, it's a regular Schlage keyway. Uh, these are the keys for it right here. And... Um, this cylinder will actually come out of here, so to get this lever off, you're going to actually have to have the key to get it off the door. You're going to rotate it 90 degrees like so, and then you're going to press this detent right here with something narrow like this file point right here, or whatever will fit in there. At that point in time, as long as you've got that depressed and turned the key, that will release the lever to come off of there. It will get you to this stage, which you will need to be at to be able to replace this. So this is what our lock's gonna look like. Uh, our new lock cylinder is in here. The important thing to remember about ASA is it's not going to come keyed. It's not gonna come set up. It's not gonna come with a sidebar. It's not gonna come ready to use out of the box like most of your Schleg or other cylinders will. Uh, it's gonna come designed for you to set it up for your own king system as the key blanks are patented so what you're going to do is unroll this it's going to say asa right there and see if that's going to work or not and it should work okay okay so what, the first thing we're going to do is is pull this cap screw off the back just like so and we're going to set that aside right here. And then we're going to get this little baggie. Put that away. And in here, you're going to have your multi piece tail piece. So basically, you're going to have to size that to the one that's on here. So it looks like we're going to have to trim that. But that's what they're designed to do. That's what those little. Uh, tabs are four right there. They're designed specifically for you to cut them to fit to size. Alright, so the first thing we're going to need to do is keep our uh, detent pin and our spring handy. So we need that and then this is going to be our cover plate for the top here. As you can see, no pins, no nothings in there. Uh, if you pull this out, the side pins are all going to fall out. So make sure you insert the key first. Insert the key because it does have, it does come fully loaded with finger pins in the side here. And if you do not insert the key, they will come out just like that. And then you'll have a mess. So we do not want to do that. Of course my spring jumped right out. But I've got those in this ASA pinning kit. You'll also need an ASA pinning kit to be able to key this. So we're gonna set this up. Oh, side springs. So your side springs are going to be these little guys right here. That's going to go right back in there. This is going to go right back in here. After I pull the key out so ever so slightly and reinsert it into that hole. and then push the key back in. Now we're back to square one, ready to go. Um, well then, let's see here. I don't remember what my cuts were on this. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. But then we'll start pinning it with bottom pins. Nope. Get one to fit properly here. Here we go. So that means that's there.
and that's going to go in there. So you're going to know you're all keyed up when all those pins are nice and flat and flush just like that. That's ultra, ultra, ultra important. Okay, so now we're going to insert the sidebar in here and basically it's going to be these teeny, teeny, tiny little springs that are going to be in your kit that are going to say uh, side springs. So we're going to set those right in the, there's a teeny tiny little hole drill just for them, right there and right there. So we're going to set those up in there, make sure they're standing upright. And then they'll probably fall down in there like so, and then they can stand them up just right, just like that. So that's what they should look like in there. And then you're gonna grab your sidebar. Your sidebar has to match your key coding on the side. You cannot just take a random sidebar and stick it in there. Also, these sidebars are reversible, so you can run two different key blanks and two different key keyways or keys and two different sidebars. Uh, so you're gonna need to make sure you have it in the right direction. One way is one key, one way is the other key. So we'll just kind of take a look and take a good guess here and try and match those up. And that looks like it's going to be it. When it springs all the way down in there, you know you've done it properly. So then we're going to take this setup, insert it into the housing, and if it turns, you know that you got the proper sidebar in there. If it does not turn, you need to flip your sidebar around or you don't have the right sidebar and you don't have the right key blank because those side pins interact with this side milling here. This side milling here interacts with the side pins that interacts with the sidebar and allows it to fall in properly. So that's going to be the one thing that messes everybody up. You got to have, you got to be set up for this program to work. Okay here, so then now we're going to interact the top pins with the bottom pin. So you need to know the bidding that you did with the bottom and then you're going to have a top pin it looks like so, that is gonna interact with the bottom pin because they come in different lengths. So we're gonna start filling this thing up. And then we're going to start doing top springs. Okay, these also springs are extra stiff. So we're just going to start filling these up right here. Press them down just like that, and then your slide cap is going to slide in, and I guess it doesn't matter which direction it goes, but it's going to start sliding in here. And the easiest way i found to slide this in here is to use this Phillips head screwdriver, push it down, and then start sliding it in there, because it allows that to slip over the spring, but it for some reason, this little cobalt screwdriver is just perfect for being able to press that down in there and then let it slide without getting caught. Okay, and then after we get that done, you need to take a tool like so and crimp your ends however you want to do it just take that I'll probably actually do it with my leatherman a little bit better we'll pin it down too but i just want to stop it from moving for right now so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to crimp this and then i'm going to crimp this grab it Crimp it once in the middle. <clears throat> and then we'll 
just take these and tack it down. Okay, so you get a couple pins that pin up like that, these little pin marks, and then you should be good to go. We'll go ahead and test the key out. And put a little dry Teflon in there. Just like so. Try our key out, and boom, there you go. Ready to go. Now we're just going to reassemble just as we would anything else where we're going to put this uh, spring into here. Let's look and see which way that's got to go. It's got to be vertically up and down because that's what the old one was. So let's see what that does. Vertically up and down. Perfect. And then our screw. Mm. Tighten, back it off one, try our key again. Perfect. He comes in and out just fine. All right, so now we need to measure these two the same. So this right here needs to be cut at this second line. So we'll just go ahead and cut that off. Just like so, and score it, and it'll bend and break off just like that. Now they're the same size, and they're ready to be inserted back into the lock cylinder. <clears throat> and that is going to sit in there just like that, and you are now ready in high security locks. So. We changed our regular schleg over to the high security and you're good to go. So thanks for watching.